Welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Austin and today I'm going to show you guys how to get started in Procreate 5. It's going to be an absolute beginner's crash course to show you just how to get painting and drawing and where to start once you open the app. I know you're here to learn something. Let's jump in and not waste any more time. When you first open the app, it's going to look something like this. We have uh, these basic sort of template images here that you can check out and look at experiment with. Um, but other than that, it's going to be blank. So to create a new canvas, we're going to start by coming up here to the top right and we're going to hit this plus sign. It's going to open up our canvas menu and you can see here a couple of options. If you want to create a new canvas yourself and create one from scratch, you can just hit that little uh, plus tab icon in the top right corner of the menu screen or you can use one of these selections here. Basically it's going to show us the name of it, it's going to show us the color channels for it, whether it's RGB or CMYK or something else, and it's going to tell us the dimensions. So the square is 2048 pixels by 2048 pixels or the 4x6 photo is 6 inches by 4 inches. We're going to go with the paper and we're going to click on that. Basic gestures that you're going to want to know for navigating are two fingers on the screen, pinching will zoom in and out as well as rotate your canvas to whatever dimension you want. When we go to start painting we're going to start by choosing our brush. So if we come up here there's a little icon at the top that has a paintbrush. We can click on it and this will allow us to scroll through the brush menus. On the left, you have different types of brushes, so painting brushes, drawing, inking, sketching, it's all sorts of different stuff. On the right, pick what brush you want from the menu. So let's go with this one. The next thing that we can choose is our color. So if we come up here on the far right, we have that little circle, circular dot that's going to have our color options in it. At the bottom of this menu, you can see the different menus and ways you can choose your color as well as some palettes. But I like the classic one. It just has three sliders for hue, saturation, and value. So I'm going to find a color I like. We're going to uh, start painting. That's how you put down marks. Let's learn a little bit more about how to optimize or adjust our brush. On the left, we have these sliders here. The top slider is going to be our brush size. The bigger we make it, the bigger our marks will be on the page like this, or we can bring it down really small and get really fine detailed marks. The other slider is gonna be for our opacity. So if we wanna bring our opacity down really low, let's pick another color here, give us a little bit of variety. If we wanna pick another color, we can come down here and start painting with a lower opacity, or we can turn it up and make it much more opaque. And then the last thing here is the little eyedropper tool. If we click on that dot, it's going to let us color pick any color on our screen. And then when we release, that color will now be selected and we can start painting with that instead. And then the last thing you'll see is these little undo and redo arrows. You can click on those, but honestly, I pretty much never use those. Instead, a quick shortcut is to use two fingers, tap on the screen once to undo, and you can repeat the process undoing as you go. To redo, tap with three fingers and it will redo. Next, let's uh, look at how to create new layers. So if we come over all the way to the right, we'll see that there's two squares that are overlapping each other right next to the color picker. So if we click on that, it's going to open our layer menu. Right now, we just have two layers, the background color and layer one. The background color, we can change to be whatever color we want. So let's try something like this. I think that looks nice. We go back to our layers, we can see that the background layer is always locked. We can't really do anything to change it. However, the layer one, we can slide and either lock it or duplicate it or delete it, whatever we want to do. And we can use this little tab here to flip it on and off. To change the layer modes, you're going to click on that little N that stands for normal for what the layer mode is on, but you can switch it to be whatever layer mode you want, just like in Photoshop. We're not going to go into the details of layer mode, that's a whole separate video, but just wanted to show you where the option is. And then to create a new layer, you're going to hit that plus sign up top, and that will make a new layer automatically set to normal. Like I said, you can turn any of these on and off at any time. And then let's come over here and pick a new color and try painting again. Let's pick a different brush as well. Try this one. And you can see now that we can turn that layer on and off and it will not affect the layer beneath it. We can even select the layer below that we just painted on and paint on that and it will go beneath the layer we just created. So you can see here it's not showing up on top of the green but instead underneath it. And then 
Let's go over now the other tools we have to work with. Up here next to the paintbrush, we have the smudge tool. Click on the smudge tool, same as the paintbrush. We can choose what texture we want for our brush. And we have the same thing with sliders and the opacity. For smudge, opacity is going to determine how strong the smudge effect is, and slider is just going to increase the size. When we use the smudge tool, and we go onto our canvas, we can click on here, and it's basically just going to push and move whatever pigment or paint that we have on the canvas around the image. If we have multiple things, let's say, uh, let's paint a little bit more color in here, and then see how they interact. We'll get a few effects in here just to uh, mix it up and show what it's going to look like once we start mixing. All right, so we come back to our smudge tool. Now you can see when we smudge, it's going to mix these all together. And like I said, depending on what texture you use, you're going to get different effects. You get a much softer blend or something a little bit more extreme. It's up to you. So that's the smudge tool. The last one is the eraser tool. And it does exactly what it sounds like. It erases stuff. Same thing as before, we can choose the texture for our eraser tool. And we can choose the size and opacity as well. And that can just allow us to erase straight through our image, keeping in mind that it is layer specific. So whatever layer you're on is what's gonna get erased and everything underneath it is going to stay the same. The last couple things we'll go over is how to merge your layers. So let's say you have your layers, they look fine, you're happy with them. We'll go ahead, you can either click on the layer and then hit merge down or you can just use two fingers and pinch them together. And you can do this with multiple layers as well. If you just pinch all of them, they'll all get squished together. That's the basics there for layers. The last thing I'll show you with the layers is how to rename them. If you just click on it, you can rename your layer whatever you want. We'll rename this one Fun Times because you and I here today are having some fun times. Next, I'm gonna show you the last thing which is how to export an image. So once you've created your masterpiece, you're going to come over here to the wrench icon, click on that, and you're going to go to canvas, share. You're going to go to share, and it's going to say share image, and it will have a couple options, procreate, PSD, PDF, JPEG, PNG, and TIFF. Procreate is just going to be a procreate file. It means you can open it in the procreate app again at a later date. It'll have all of the data preserved. So your layers, your palettes, stuff like that will all be saved in the image. PSD is a Photoshop document. You can open it in Photoshop and be able to do the same thing with as it's not completely compatible, but a lot of the stuff will still cross over and should be preserved. And then PDF, JPEG, PNG, TIFF are all just like the namesakes of standard image format. So what we can do is hit share. We're gonna hit JPEG for this. And you can choose where you wanna send it. You can send it to Discord, you can send it to your email, whatever you wanna do, or you can just come down here and hit save image, click okay, it'll access your folders and export successful. You can now go to your folder or your photos and you should be able to see the image you just created save there, full resolution and able to access zoom in and all of that. And that's it. That's sort of the basics of getting started in Procreate. Hopefully that was helpful. If you wanna learn more, check out the other videos on my channel. Um, we also teach online courses and things like that where you can see the link to that in the description and uh, I hope to see you around make sure to subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next one bye